ball. Um, so I'm actually here on holidays, believe that or not. And yeah, I thought it would be a good idea to come here to drop by and talk about what we do at Mozilla these days. So like I say, I'm a holiday, on holidays, so you don't have to tweet that, hey, Paul is talking about this thing, that's great, or whatever like that, because my boss is going to see that and he's going to be mad anyway. Um, so I'm going to speak in English, if you don't mind. Um, I could speak French, but you won't like it. I, I'm actually taking courses like Chinese lessons, so I'm learning Chinese. Um, but so far, the only thing I can say is si shou tsen tsai na, which is not very useful. So anyway, I'm going to do that in English, right, if you don't mind. So, hi, I'm Paul Rouget. I, I'm French, I work for Mozilla, and my job is to do that, Firefox. I hope you've heard about it. Um, and at Mozilla, we are working on something we call JavaScript. So Brendan Eck, the, the, the CTO of Mozilla, is the inventor of JavaScript. So JavaScript is a pretty big deal for us. So that's the title of my talk, The Future of JavaScript. So I'm going to be talking about the language itself. So you've been using JavaScript for years, and the language is evolving. And I'm going to show you what it looks like, what you're going to be using in the coming years. So I'm going to be writing code, right? So the language itself is going to evolve. The performance are changing as well. We need to have a high performance in JavaScript because the web is moving forward. We want to do some great applications. We want to do some crazy, um, crazy apps online on phone, on tablets, so we have to, to have something that is able to compete with native apps. So I'll be talking about performance. But performance is nothing without APIs. If you can't control more things, if you can't leverage your device, if you can take advantage of the webcam, for example, if you can take advantage of the different things you're going to find on the phone, because we use JavaScript on web pages, but we also use JavaScript on web apps. Um, on phones, so I'll be talking about that. So I'm going to start with the language. So JavaScript, the real name, I mean, JavaScript has been standardized by an organization named ECMA, E-C-M-A. And well, the real name of JavaScript is ECMAScript. And the new version of it, the new version of JavaScript is called ECMAScript 6. You probably heard about ES6, which is ECMAScript 6, or Harmony. It's the same thing. So I want to show that. I want to show what, what the next version of JavaScript is going to look like. So I'm going to be writing code. It's something you're not supposed to do when you give a talk to write code. But well, fuck it. I'm going to do it. And I might fail anyway. <laughs> so if you want to play with the new version of JavaScript, you can use Firefox. We support the new ECMAScript language in Chrome. You can just go to Chrome uh, slash slash flags and enable experimental JavaScript so you can play with it as well. With Node.js, if you start nodes with dash dash harmony, you also have access to these things, the feature I'm going to be showing soon. And if you want to be, to be able to use ES6 in the wild in your web pages, you can always use uh, a little library named ES6 shim, which is like a... Um, a kind of a wrapper around normal JavaScript code to expose the feature I'm going to be talking about. So I'm going to show you some code. So ho I hope you can see this. Is it good or it's not good? Can you see something? Yep. OK, good. So the very first thing I want to talk about, so first, does this work? Yeah, it works good. So this is a typical uh, piece of code, of JavaScript code. You know very well. It's pretty simple. And what I'm going to be doing, it's step after step, I'm going to change this code to make it look like an ES6 code, so the next version of JavaScript. 
The very first thing we do is uh, to introduce a new keyword. So var, this thing here, um, that var, it's, it's like, so it works well, but there's a problem with scops. You might have been running into this issue where uh, you define a variable in uh, a scop between bra brackets, and it's been exposed to the upper scop. Like, if you have something like that, for example, if true var foo equals zero, well, actually, foo is available here as well, right? So this is, this is a thing you might want, but if you want to have a scope-based uh, variable declaration, we introduce a new variable named let. So let is uh, the scope of let is just what's between brackets. So uh, if block, for example, is going to be uh, is going is going to define the scope of a, the whole uh, of the variable. So let let is the first thing we used to say that let is the new var uh, because usually people want to use variable this way. So let is the thing. It's it's pretty cool. Um, the next thing I want to show you is what we, what we call the arrow function. So when you write a function, you usually do, do it like that. Well, maybe what you can do is this. Um, something like that. That works too, right? We call that the arrow function. Um, so going use this little arrow to uh, say how you want to use functions. And there's a maj major difference compared to normal function and this. The way this, the, the keyword this, is defined is different. Here we have a lexical this. That means you don't have to bind functions anymore. So that's pretty handy. Um, another thing is default arguments. So if you look at, look at this function here, it's a log function. And what's specific about this log function is you can define a suffix here. If you uh, say, OK, uh, if I want to use uh, my log, say foobar, and then I, st I say, OK, I want my log to start with this, it's going to first write the suffix and then foobar. Well, maybe you don't want to define the suffix and have a default, a default uh, suffix. So what we usually do is what you see here. Like, if there's no suffix, then use the default one. Well. With ES6, there's a better way to do it. It's this. So you can see that in different languages already, right? Like in C, for example, uh, that's the default value of the suffix uh, argument. Well, talking about this, there's also a better way to uh, handle arguments. It's what we call the rest argument. So if you type something like that, foobar, so here we have three arguments. Oh, wait. Uh, OK. If you do something like that now, you're going to have the, the last part of, of the argument list is an array. So for example, what you could do is go through uh, do something like that, like go through the, the, the array and do like for let one argument of foobar yeah, print, print uh, one argument, or console.log, anyway. So, oh, and I use um, the of keyword here. So that's, that's a way to iterate through uh, iteratable objects. So that's pretty handy to go through arrays. Um, it's not like in. In go through all the keys of your object. So in the case of an array, it's going to go. It's going to write one, two, three, four, length, and all the properties of the array object. So of just go through the, the object, the, the elements of the array. So these are things you can do. Um, so this is like. So we call that the default argument here, and this is the rest argument. At the end of the talk, I have a slide with all the, the links to these things. Um, we also have the destructor uh, assignment. So if you look at this, that's a typical thing we want to do, like writing a function, and the function is going to return uh, 
several, uh, several values. Uh, usually you put that in an array, right? Or maybe you want to return an object, but most of the time you just return an array. Um, the way I do it here. So this, the square and cube uh, function just do the square of a number and the cube and return an array with the first item being the square and the second one being, being the cube, right? And the way you get it is like that, right? Well, what you can do with ECMAScript scripts uh, 6, it's something like that. Which is better, right? Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, also, so we call that destructive assignments. Um, there's another thing that is not exactly ES6. It's something we're experimenting with. Um, it's, it's, not, it's still not part of the standard, uh, but it's, it works only in Firefox for now. Uh, it's what we call expression closure. So if we go back to this function here, the square function, um, we can actually write this. And, oh, no, not exactly that, that. That's like a lambda notation. Might have heard of it before. Um, okay, that, right? Well, if you combine that with the arrow function, you are then, you see this, right? So we can do that here as well. So yeah, so that's just like a very small part of ES6. There's some, a couple of other things that are very, very interesting. I don't have time to show everything, but maps for key values, uh, objects, like when you can uh, associate any object with another object, uh, like, 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 like a JavaScript object, right? But in a JavaScript object, we use strings to, to link a property, a key to a value. But with maps, you can do uh, object to object. You have proxies as a way to, to have hooks into uh, the whole object mechanism, like being able to uh, write function about how to get the property, writing getter, setters, and stuff like that. So there's that. So you can, if you use other languages, you're going to find the same patterns in Python, in C, C++, something like that. Yeah. And, and JavaScript is, is, is not compiled when you uh, ship a web page uh, with JavaScript code. JavaScript code is, is, is like uh, you ship the source code. You're not shipping the, the compiled version of it. So what Firefox or Chrome or all the browser do is to compile JavaScript and then execute it, right? Um, the story is a little more complex than that, just having bytecode and then assembly. It's a little more complex. But basically, if I want to, um, to simplify, to, to just uh, summarize what we do when we find some JavaScript and want to execute it, it's just to uh, compile that into some sort of bytecode. So bytecode is slow. Uh, and sometimes we can optimize it. Sometimes we can say, OK, this bytecode has been executed a lot. And maybe we can just keep the, 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 the compiled version of it, the, the assembly version of it, and just save it. And we run that, right? So you've probably heard about the JIT, JIT optimization. That's what it is. Um, but it's not perfect um, for different reasons. First, the compiled version of JavaScript is, is not as close to assemblies as we want for different reasons. First, we have to uh, handle memory ourselves with a gar garbage collector. And we have to do type checking all the time because the way types work in JavaScript is like pretty abstract. And we have to check that the type is not changing and all the time. So it's, not, it's, it's very hard to optimize. So we have different ways to handle that. Um, the first one is at the language level. So uh, we call that type arrays and array buffers. Uh, these, these are um, buffers and that it's like kind of some arrays, but with some object inside that we know the nature of this object. We know there's no holes in the array. We know that the type of the object in the array will never change. So that is very, very important for some specific use cases I'm going to be showing now. Um, we want that because we're starting to manipulate a lot of data. Now, these days, with the new APIs you're going to be able to use in web pages, you're able to use files. You can unzip files in JavaScript. You can uh, treat and you can uh, handle like, uh, some huge WebGL games 
with a lot of data. You can grab uh, the frames of a video and do some play, plays with it, like with a pixel and do things. That's a lot of data. When you think about it, a video that is 800 pixels per 600 or 400, whatever, it's like that's a shitload of pixels, right? And when you want to use a, when you use a JavaScript array, normal one, it's, it's way too slow. So we have those typed arrays. And, and with that, we can do some pretty cool stuff. Like uh, maybe this one. So yeah. Oh. So that's, that's, I'm controlling the car here. So that's, that's 3D, right? And to be able to render and do pretty things with that, well, you need to have some good, uh, good ways to handle data. So I have more demos, but I don't think I'm going to have time to show everything. I will see at the end. And well, that's good to handle data. But we want to go further. We want to be able to compete with native code. And when I'm talking about native code, I'm talking about C code, C++ code, right? So to get there, to, uh, so, uh, the ultimate goal in this case, we want to be able to compete with C, C++. Well, we want JavaScript to become the new assembly of the web. We want people to compile C code to JavaScript. JavaScript becoming the new assembly language. Well, to get there, we need two components. To get there, first we need a compiler, something that's going to take C++ and compile that into JavaScript, right? C or C++. And also, like I said, it's pretty hard to optimize a compiled JavaScript code because of type checking and because of memory management, right? So, so the solution Modula came with, it's, it's well, it's very, it's pretty. It sounds right. It's what we call ACMGS and AMScript 10. So let me explain that. I said that memory management is hard, right? But what if we define a subset of JavaScript that is, that is optimized for memory management? What if we say, OK, this function has this amount of memory available, and that's it. And well, you can only use numbers. You can't use like complex types. This subset of JavaScript is named ASMGS. So because it's a subset, everybody can execute this, uh, this kind of script. I'm going to show you an example. And, and it's the, 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 in this subset of JavaScript, we just removed all the things that makes JavaScript slow. So it's hard to write by hand this code. It's, it's not easy, right? So we have a compiler that takes C code, C++ code, and compile that into JavaScript. So you don't have to write it by hand. You just write the C code or compile exi exi existing C++ code, and we're going to translate that into some uh, ASMGS code. So this is what it looks like. This is a typical ASMGS. Function. So, a fun so when you say, here you see the string, the, the second line, use ASM. That is, if, if, if the, the JavaScript compiler sees that, he knows it doesn't have to go through the bytecode, compile the code directly to assembly. And it, the, 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 the JavaScript engine also knows that it doesn't have to handle memory. It doesn't have to handle type checking. So man, this is blading fast. This is very, very fast. Um, and, and, and if your browser or your engine, JavaScript engine doesn't support ASMGS, well, it's OK, because this is still JavaScript. It's a subset of JavaScript. It's not highly optimized, but still, it works. So how do we get there? How do we get this kind of code? So if you look here, there's a couple of interesting, to, interesting things to look at. First, there's no objects, only numbers. And we make, make sure the type of the numbers don't change, right? And also, if you look at the top right part of this function, see the argument, there's a heap argument. This is like a buffer. This is where you can store data. So the engine only knows that it only has to, to deal with this uh, heap uh, buffer. So how do we get there? So we have what we call mscript 10. So it's based on, based on LLVM bytecode. I don't know if you heard about that. 
It's like a C lang. Uh, it's, it's when you compile C, C plus plus whatever, with the C lang compiler, we go into it compiles the whole code into a bytecode, and we are able to trans translate this bytecode into JavaScript code, ASMGS code. And then from that, well, you can write games. You can do some crazy stuff. So at Mozilla, what we did is to work with um, a company na named Epic. They are the authors of a 3D engine, the one used by Unreal Tournament. So there's an engine named Unreal Engine. And we built that into, um, well, we built that into a, into a JavaScript web page, into a web page. And we're able to have that, this kind of performance, into, uh, into a web page. So it's 3D, a 3D engine that has been written in C++, compiled to JavaScript. It's then loaded inside Firefox. It uses the use ISM uh, string. So Firefox knows that it can just get rid of the garbage collector and get rid of type checking. So we have high performance uh, results. So that's come in Firefox 22. In terms of results, like benchmarking, we've been like, uh, playing a lot with this. And, and basically, the result is, is pretty impressive. If you look at this, the blue and red lines are Firefox and Chrome, normal script engine, nothing special here. So when we run our benchmarks, we can say, OK, it's just it's slow, right? Especially compared to native code. Native code is the yellow bar, right? The green bar is when we use ASMGS. So what's important here, two things. First, when the JavaScript code is compiled to SMGS, uh, we actually are two times slower than native code, which is very good. It's, it's, it's like what you get with Java and stuff. So yeah, SMGS. That is, that is uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the best thing we could do for JavaScript. Like, in terms of performance, this is going to be awesome, being able to have like, native code running in your browser. OK, what's next? Well, next is APIs. You want to take advantage of that. You want to leverage this performance, this new JavaScript, and do crazy stuff. So right now, you can use, you can use, DOM, use DOM, WebGL. That's OK, but you can do much more than that. There's a lot of APIs you can do, you can use. And at Mozilla, we're working on that, on what we call the web APIs. I'm going to show you a couple of them. So the first one is Get User Media. You might have heard of it. So it's an API that gives you access to the webcam, right? And this is a video tag, so I can use CSS with this, right? And do funny stuff. That's really useless, but still funny enough. Um, there's more, more APIs. There's one I want to show you is this one. So this is the battery API. So that just tells you the battery level of your web page, of your, sorry, of your computer. So it's, here it's 99%. Uh, if I'm Unplugging, unplugging my, my Mac, I see that the battery is not charging. So you have access to the battery, right? So things like that. Well, actually, we can do more. We can do much more. And at Mozilla, our goal is to wait. basically take a phone, take all the parts of the phone, and turn that into a JavaScript API, right? So that's, that's the ultimate goal. Like, for example, having like, so we have GPS already, but have more like Bluetooth and stuff. So I'm going to show you a little demo. Um, so the demo is happening on this phone. This is an Android phone running Firefox, Firefox for Android. So I'm going to go fast because I don't have much time. But um, this is this is my phone running Firefox. And you can see that the battery level is 11%. Uh, I'm going to plug my, my phone, and it's going to tell me that it's charging. So that's a web page, OK? That is just a web page. You can try it yourself, right? And if I'm going to move my hand right next to the phone, if there's a proximity sensor, and it's telling me that my hand is, is near, right? There's the GPS that tell, give me the coordinates of where I am right now. I click here. So I'm here in Taipei. Uh, and yeah. And this is like a notification API. So here I'm just like going to have some notifications. I just dim Firefox, wait a little, and I'm going to see a notification in the status bar on Android, right? So again, this is just a web page. 
Um, the next one is uh, orientations. So it's the little thing here, the green thing. When I move my phone, you see the, the green thing moving here. It's just like following the, 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 how I turn my phone. That's it. Uh, the next one is, OK, vibration. Well, you can't experiment it here. So that's the, the webcam, the one we just, I just showed you in Firefox desktop. And the last one is the full screen API that just take the page and put it full screen on the phone. Right? So what? So what? We have a lot of APIs coming, like a lot of API. TCP uh, APIs, Bluetooth APIs, a lot of things like that. And well, the natural move now is to say, OK, that is great. Well, let's build an operating system from that, right? So, so that's the next thing we're doing now, is to build an OS operating system based on these APIs. So this phone here, uh, I won't have time to show it now, but we have it on the Mozilla booth right there. This is Firefox OS. Every single pixel you see on this phone is HTML. Every single pixel. Um, and we build a whole operating system based on these APIs and this new JavaScript, ECMAScript 6 uh, language, and with all these APIs, with all this performance we have now. So, the whole phone is working. All the things you would expect from an Android phone, we have it here as well. Like being able to call someone with the web telephony API, being able to share files with the Bluetooth API. And so yeah, we have a phone that is whole running with JavaScript and, and uh, these web APIs. And I think that's it. Um, you're going to be able to find all the code I've been showing before at this URL is.gdes6 snippets. And there's a very good article about ASAME GS by John Rezik. We encourage you to read that. And some of the documentation about the web APIs on hacks.mozilla.org. So yeah, I'm done. Do you have any questions? Or maybe not. Hi, uh, just wondering what, what part of this is on Chrome or on other browsers? So, okay, web APIs. So we're working with the w th W3C to uh, write specs. So the battery API, for example, is in Chrome. Or what the vibrator API, being able to make some vibration with your phone. It, it, this works with Chrome. Um, so, but. All the things are still work in progress, but it's, it's going to be a spec. And because it's going to be a spec, people are going to implement it, right? And some of them are already in Chrome, and more are going to be coming soon, hopefully. Um, but we're working with them to write the right spec, right? So here, Firefox OS, the, the, the code name of Firefox OS is boot to Gecko, right? Gecko is the engine of Firefox. But we hope to see a boot to WebKit like being able to use WebKit instead of Gecko, for example. And, and the apps are going to, in theory, work as well, right? So, and geolocation, get user media, uh, all these things already work in Chrome, right? And a lot of them work in IE as well. Not all of them, but a lot of them work on IE as well. Yeah. Any other questions? OK, thank you very much. Uh, 接下来我们休息十分钟。